Scientists have been able to use blood in order to create custom 3D implants, and this is going to pave the way for personalized implants made from your own stem cells. I'm really excited for this. For those of you who are not aware, usually when there is an implant, it's made out of some kind of metal material. This is great. I actually have metal in my foot from when I broke it quite severely. However, anytime you introduce a foreign body into your body, it becomes an infection risk. The very first one that you should be concerned about is rejection. The best you can hope for from an implant is that it's largely ignored by your immune system. There's a large risk for infection when it comes to hip and knee implants, and that can persist for several years after the surgery. This is even worse for brain implants, where roughly 3% of all patients will get an infection, and that is higher if it has to be replaced. Now, your brain is an immune privileged area of the body, and that just means that the risk of rejection is low, but that also means that your immune system is not going to be able to fight infection very efficiently in your brain. If the goal of your body is just to ignore the implant, then if bacteria get onto it and start growing and the immune system can't identify it, you'll end up getting a very severe infection, and this is probably why it's more severe and more common in brain implants. Right now, the goal of the 3D printed blood implants is to heal the body. So where you might have an implant to help support bone structures that have been damaged, you could have a 3D printed version of it that would interact with your immune system. It's bio-cooperative. When we are talking about things like brain chips, I think that this is really going to be the future, chips that are made out of your own tissue. The only reason that we can use brain chips and have it coordinate with our body is that we have certain components of our bodies that are a little bit similar to a robot. We do actually operate on electrical impulses, for example. If we can figure out how to hack that system, we could end up actually using biological components that could do roughly the same thing. Meanwhile, the second patient has gotten their Neuralink device in a clinical trial. After the first patient ended up having 90% of all the electrodes peel away from his brain in less than a year. Now remember, roughly 3-4% to 4 of patients end up with infections from brain implants. These have been around for a little while. That risk is higher if you have a replacement, and I understand why this guy may not want it actually to be replaced, even though it does benefit his life significantly. I also understand why you may not want to undergo that risk once a year if the device simply does not last very long. It is really frustrating as we see more technology right on the horizon as people are presently suffering, and you might feel like it's a good idea to just jump directly into the next big thing. One of the things that we have to consider in science, especially when working with human patients, is are we waiting long enough to have the best possible outcome? And if we jump in too soon, you could hamstring the entire industry, really because of bad press. Would you get a brain implant in the event that you were paralyzed, or would you do it just because it was fun and it was the next big thing to have telepathy?